Want to know how to import the events from Eventbrite to a website using Monero's calendar? Make sure to stick with me till the end of this video. So, in this video, you'll learn how to create an API token to import events from Eventbrite onto your Mac website. After installing the Advanced Importer add-on, let's head to the Advanced Importer menu tab under ME Calendar. Next, we'll need to configure our Eventbrite to connect it to our add-on, so click on Settings. Now, click on Eventbrite. Here you will need an API token, so click on Get API Token. If you're already signed in on the Eventbrite website, the API token will be displayed to you here. But if you aren't signed in, like right now, then you'll first need to sign in to get uh, the free API key, always with the captchas. Let me prove I'm a human first. All right, now we have to log in. You can use an email, your Google account, Facebook, or even Apple, um, you know, Apple account to sign up. I'll use my Google account to log in. My private API token is immediately generated. Back on our advanced importer dashboard, I'll choose a title and, and, and you know, paste the API token. Make sure to enable the update existing events and account active options as well. Finally, click on add account. Now, our account is created and details are available as well. So in the part two, we are going to talk about Eventbrite imports. Now we can begin the process of importing our Eventbrite events to my name is Calendar. But before that, let's head back to our Eventbrite account and create an event. Under the Events tab, you are able to see all your existing events. I want to create a new event, so let's click on that. I want to show the steps, so let's not use AI for now. The event creation page is very straightforward, so let's review each. First is choosing a thumbnail for our event. Next is the event title and summary. Then it's time for the date and time, and also the event type, whether it's a single event or recurring. In the location field, we have different options to either have a venue online or to be determined later. All right, done. Click and save and continue. Since I specified that the event is going to be online, it's asking me to either provide a link or connect it to Zoom. There's also the attendee page visibility, uh, you know, settings, you can tweak with it. I'll add a link for the online event and hit save and continue for now. In the set step, we need to determine whether our event will have tickets or not. There are three ticketing options, paid, free and optional fee. I'll choose free to make it easier for this demo. You can name the ticket, set the quantity, and you know, I'll choose 100. Under advanced settings, you can set the minimum and maximum along with description for what's offered in the ticket. Let's click on save. Now click on next to finish setting the event. Here we can set the organizer, the event type and category in text to help others find your event. And once you're done, click on Publish. Now that our event is published, let's head to the All Events tab. We've got two events on Eventbrite. Let's try to import both. The first field in the Eventbrite Advanced Importer page allows us to assign the imported events to a category on our Mac website. The Import by field Let's you either you know uh, import all the events or import specific ones using their Eventbrite events ID. The only issue with the latter option is that each ID would take up a whole line. Under import type, we can choose whether it's a one-time import or done uh, on a scheduled basis. If we select the scheduled, we'll have the option to choose on multiple times a day, weekly, or once a month. The status section determines the events imported from Eventbrite based on their status. We can also determine the time frame for the event import using the start date and end date fields. With that out of the way, let's click on Get All Events. Both of the events on my Eventbrite account were retrieved successfully. Now, when I click on Download All Events, 
they will be added to Mac, or I can select one of them and click on Download Selected Events. Let's wait for the import to complete. Both our events have been successfully imported. As you can see, both events have been imported to our Mac events. One important thing is that if we set the import type to scheduled, we will have a new option called Add to Schedule instead of the Download event. If we click on it, then these two events will be added to the Scheduled Imports tab. Nice! It says that our events have been added to the Schedule. Now, both these events um, have been added to the Scheduled Imports and it also shows me when the next import time and date will be. There's another import type we can do which is Sync. So, let me quickly go over that as well. If we click on Add to Auto Sync instead, a new sync sequence has been added. Whenever a new change is made on Eventbrite, the events on Mac will also be updated at the determined time. It's important to note that you can only import Eventbrite events that you have access to since uh, the add-on requires an API token where we have found that users who run multiple events really appreciate the ease with which they can run their events on multiple platforms while keeping all their event data updated. Hope you found this video useful and I look forward to reading your thoughts and questions about the add-on below the video. Thank you very much and see you in our next video.